Last May, a 13-year-old girl named Christina Long was killed, allegedly by a man she met online. Hers was one of the first Internet-related deaths of a child, but over the last few years, the number of children targeted online for sex has exploded into the thousands. Why are the numbers rising? The answer may lie in the very nature of the Internet itself. Investigators say it's fueling a new class of sexual deviant that defies any conventional profile. And as Christina Long's case illustrates, it's not only the predators who are leading secret lives on the web, but the victims as well. By outward appearances, Christina Long didn't seem like a troubled teen. She was a cheerleader, an altar girl, and a sixth grade honor student at St. Peter's Catholic School in Danbury, Connecticut. But she'd had a difficult childhood. Her parents' divorce was bitter, and her mother moved away. Christina continued to see her father on weekends, but lived with her aunt, Shelley Ryling. Ryling tried to make her life as normal as possible, providing her with everything a teenager could want, including a new computer. She told me she had a lot of friends on the computer, and every once in a while, without letting her know I was invading her privacy, I would just um, come in and check on her, but I would do it like, so, what you doing? <laughs> you know, trying to be curious, and, and I would look over her shoulder, and she would usually be talking to St. Peter's kids that I knew. Kids from school. Yeah. Kids her own age. Yeah. Even though Christina was spending more and more time on her computer, her aunt felt secure knowing she was safe at home. She says the only time Christina was out unsupervised was on Friday nights when she went to the mall with her friends. Riling always picked her up promptly at 9 o'clock. But when she arrived on May 17th, there was no sign of Christina. By 10 of 10, uh, my anxieties were way sky high. And... Uh, so I went to security, and I was really nervous, and I told them, you know, uh, Chrissy hasn't shown up yet. Could we page her? So they did. They paged her. And I was, like, waiting for her to come running down that hall and hugging me, but that didn't happen. Ryling called the Danbury police, who came to the house after midnight. The detective first suspected Christina was a runaway. He turned to her computer for clues about where she might have gone, but discovered she had secretly changed her email password. It wasn't until 6 the next morning that the detective got America Online to grant them access. So when he was finally able to get the password, get into the computer, what did you find? I found some shocking things. I realized that she was um, talking to, um, to strangers, not kids from school. This one boy was saying, I'm sorry. I'm glad you got your period. I'm glad you're not pregnant, and um, I'll wear a condom the next time. And that was, that was really shocking to see that. Very shocking. When you read those emails, could you believe that that was your Chrissy? No. And I um, re immediately felt really bad that I hadn't checked the emails. You know, I am. Um, but we had such trust in each other, and she never gave me any reason not to trust her. But that morning, police not only found the email that shocked her aunt, they also found others that revealed Christina had had a secret sexual encounter only a week earlier with another man. His screen name was Hot ES 300. More importantly, Hot ES 300 had scheduled a meeting with her for May 17th, the very night Christina disappeared. Investigators soon tracked Hot ES 300 to 24-year-old Saul Dos Reis, a Brazilian national who worked in his family's restaurant and lived with his wife in Greenwich, Connecticut. That afternoon, police called Dos Reis in for questioning. At first, according to police records, he told them he had seen Christina that night, but had dropped her back at the Danbury Mall. But after two intense days of questioning, Dos Reis reportedly changed his story. Police say he led them to a nearby neighborhood. There, lying face up in a stream, was Christina's body. She had been strangled. Dos Reese was arrested and charged with her death. He's pled not guilty and is awaiting trial. When we interviewed him in prison, he told us she had approached him online. I met her talking. Just She popped in one day. We started talking. In a chat room? No, just on an instant message. How did you meet somebody on an instant message? Everybody has like a profile on, as a member of America Online, and then you can search people. 
with the same interests and talk to them. Their shared interest, he says, was fast cars. His screen name, Hot ES300, is taken from a Lexus automobile. But police say there's a lot more to it than that. Dos Reese also is charged with using the Internet to entice Christina for sex. People hear about this story, they hear 13-year-old girl, 24-year-old man, Internet, and they say Internet predator, on the Internet, cruising around, looking for some young, vulnerable girl. That's how people portray me in the media. But that's not who I am. But what's unfair about the portrayal? I mean, you are 24. She was 13. You were having sex with a minor. And somehow she ended up dead. What's unfair about that portrayal? Well, police have made a lot of, in the media, a lot of assumptions. Dos Reese says he thought she was 18. But according to the prosecution's filings, he not only enticed her, telling her she was attractive and sexy and promising her a present, but seemed to know she was a minor. Later, he asked for suggestive photos to show his friends. He wrote in an email, We definitely got to show them something wild, right? I was just trying to make another friend. It wasn't just about sex? No. But when you met her, it wound up being about sex? I would love to tell you about all this stuff. But I can't. My lawyers won't allow me to. So this is Chrissy's room? Yeah. Christina Long's aunt, meanwhile, has left her room the way it was the day she disappeared. She says she warned Christina a number of times about the dangers of talking to strangers online. She said, Shelly, I know chat rooms are bad because I went into one once and they started talking about sexual stuff and it scared me and I got out of it and I'm never going to go back into another chat room. So you felt fine with her having the computer in her room. Right. You thought she was responsible. Right. And she was in the house, too. And I felt safer with her being in the house and being outside playing with her friends because she was right here where, you know, I would think she was safe. You don't realize that a computer predator is like practically in the same room as your child. In her room, Christina was online talking graphically about sex and had created her own website. She was using the screen name Long Too Hot For You. Her aunt guesses that she was exploring her sexuality through the Internet, which is remarkably typical, says former FBI profiler Ken Lanning. He spent 20 years studying both the behavior of sex offenders and their victims. Every kid is unique, and in some ways maybe she did things more than another kid, but the fact that children have needs and wants and desires and they're trying to explore things and they're going to take risks and take chances, all that kind of stuff is very typical of teenagers. For investigators like Lanning, Christina Long's case crystallizes a disturbing truth that they say society is reluctant to talk about. Many of the young victims are not forced or even tricked into these meetings. They go willingly. I want to make it clear so there's no misunderstanding. When an adult and a child have sex, the adult is the offender, the child is the victim. Always, all the time, that's just the way it is. But in some cases, the victim may be compliant. But, but they've, they've gone willingly. But they've gone they've willingly. They've gone knowing what's going to happen. But that's the whole idea of why we protect children. We recognize the children want to eat too much candy. They want to do all kinds of things that they're not supposed to do. But because they haven't reached a certain age, we protect them. Lanning says Christina Long's case is classic until May 17th. According to authorities, Dos Reese confessed to strangling Christina Long as they were having sex. Did you kill Christina? No, I'm not a killer. <laughs> what happened the night of May 17th? <sighs> then I, I lost my friend and my friend died. I tried to save her. You tried to save her? Yes. Why didn't you take her to the hospital? Her aunt asks, if he could see she was in trouble, why didn't he take her to the hospital? Why didn't he try to save her? I tried to save her. How? I tried to give her CPR. And what happened? It didn't work. Police say he confessed to driving 30 miles to Greenwich to dump the body. But when we ask about his alleged confession, one of his lawyers, Peter Tillum, interrupted our interview. If what was in the police reports were always facts, then we wouldn't need trials. 
Okay, Seoul takes great issue with what's in those police reports, and to assume but, that, they're, that they're facts. But in the, listen, in their police report, they found her because he told the police where she was. Well, that's was. what they said. Police say they found her clothing and her purse in a dumpster because Saul led them to it. That, that, that's what police say. That's not... Police say that Saul confessed to killing her during sex. We need to discuss that off camera. Tillam has filed a motion to have Dos Reese's statement thrown out, claiming it was obtained improperly. Dos Reese faces federal charges that include using the Internet to entice a minor for sex, as well as state charges that include manslaughter and sexual assault. He faces a combined sentence of up to 120 years in prison. To Ken Lanning, the charges indicate how seriously law enforcement is prosecuting Internet sex crimes. But, he says, they're still not keeping up with offenders. It may very well be that there's just so many out there, or it may very well be that the nature of the Internet is just increasing the, the reservoir of these individuals. So is the Internet, in effect, creating these sexual offenders? I don't, uh, I or don't enabling think, them? I don't think the, the Internet is creating them. I think that the Internet may be fueling them. Lanning says predators use Internet pornography and chat rooms to reinforce each other's behavior. It emboldens those who otherwise might not have acted out. Even more importantly, the Internet provides an easy and initially anonymous way for men to gain the trust of their young victims, which plays into another characteristic of offenders. They usually don't stop at just one. Did you ever meet anybody else online? Did you correspond with other people online? Yes, I had a lot of friends online. Did you ever meet any of them in person? Yes. I had friends that I had e emails all the time. People that I knew from school, from work. Any people that you met through the internet that you met and had sex with? I would like to take a break. Can you answer that? Can you answer if you met someone through the internet and had sex with them? After this interview, Saul Dos Reese was indicted on charges of using the internet to lure another underage girl for sex in 1998. His federal trial is scheduled for November. Shelley Riling is still trying to understand why her niece led a secret life on the internet, even though she had been warned of the dangers. What I think she was doing, and I think it had just started, is um, she was be becoming sexually active, and I think she was afraid to tell me because she th was afraid that I wouldn't love her if I told her. And I, of course I would have loved her, and I just wish she would have told me because then, you know, I could have helped her, and she would still be alive. 